because she's like, well, if I'm going to live for only a year left, I'm going to live to the fullest. I'm going to leave this place that makes me feel miserable. And I'm going to go to this other place where I can like be happy until I die. What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host a podcast across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are talking about five titles that I've been reading with the theme transmigration. Now, if you don't know what transmigration is, it's when the soul passes onto another body. It's sort of kind of like the cliche that a lot of isekai titles have where the person dies by getting hit by a <laughs> vehicle and then they wake up in another world or in a different body in another world. First title we have is Today the Villainess Has Fun Again. The summary is my friend stole my boyfriend and then dared to hand me a wedding invitation with a smile. Ha! I had a blast enjoying my revenge and came home and fell asleep but dot dot dot. When I woke up, I was in the body of the villainess of a romance fantasy novel who has everything, appearance, assets, and intelligence. The only thing this girl lacked was the insight to judge a man. Throw the bastard prince away to the main female lead and let us just enjoy the luxury of power and money. This story with the female lead, the one that wakes up in the villainess's body. So the villainess, she's a villainess because she was in love with the prince, but the prince goes for the fantasy novel's female protagonist. And because she's angry, jealous and such, she becomes the villainess. But because our female lead is not from this world, she is not that character, quote, character, quote, she realizes how dumb this is, how a jerk the prince is for leaving this woman that's like a total package for another woman, you know? And she actually unconsciously woos the other, was it called? Love interest because there's like a secondary male lead, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. Because this is sort of like a reverse harem, sort of. I want to say it's sort of because the female protagonist, she has all these guys fall for her and they'll do anything for her, even if she chooses someone, they'll still support her because they love her. So that's why I say it's sort of like a reverse harem. So, anyways. I like this story because the female lead, she tries to get out of these situations. She's totally using her resources because she is from a dukedom. She has money, she has power, so she utilizes it and she shows her independence where she's like, Prince, I don't know, I don't need you, you need me and you're leaving me for this other chick, your side chick? I don't think so. <laughs> and it just shows how important she is and in the story they're kind of revealing that our female lead somehow is in the body of the villainess like in the past like there's like transmigration and regression going on because it's showing some flash backs flash forwards of what the villainess did in a different scenario where our our character, our main character, was not involved. Like, how the fantasy novel played out. And through her uh, point of view, because it's just, I think the latest chapter where she's talking to the emperor, the prince's father, and he's kind of skeevy. And they're revealing it's like, like father, like son. And it's revealing that the villainess there is a reason why she was a villainess. It wasn't because she was angry, jealous, and whatnot. There, there was more to it. Next is, I will change the genre. The summary for this one is, 
I entered the world of my favorite novel and genre through someone else's body. Of course, out of all the characters, I had to enter the body of the protagonist's aunt, the woman who abused her nephew, the selfish villainess. According to the original storyline, in any case, my nephew was expected to leave my side soon. Compassion for him grew, so I put my most sincere effort into tending for him until the day we parted. Quote, I realize it is rude in asking, did you have been taking care of Luca until now? But may I take Luca to Winterwold with me? Quote, There's no way that won't happen. I mean, I suppose I could have rushed to send him off and then live comfortably, but unexpectedly. My nephew wrapped his arms around my waist and shouted, Mama, Mom! How did I become his mom all of a sudden? So in that scenario that we kind of just read with the quotes and such, our female lead, she's playing as the aunt and instead of following the storyline, she's acting as a nice aunt. She's taking care of Luca, who is the male protagonist of the story. And he gets picked up by his uncle. And that's where the uncle is saying, I realize it is rude in asking since you have been taking care of Luca until now. But may I take Luca to Winterwell with me? So that's where he's asking her. And another thing that happened that wasn't following the storyline was Luca, the male protagonist, wants to take her with him to Winterwold. So instead of parting, like what happened in the original storyline they're gonna stay together and for some reason the uncle's like yeah stay with him be his mom act as his mom and she's trying to fight it so hard she's like no 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 like in her head she's thinking i just want to like get out of the storyline do my own thing be free you know i don't want to be forced to do things according to the story like i want to be out of it and uh, both the uncle and Luca, they're like, no, you need to stay with us. And later on, it's revealed that there's some love interest going on. And there's more to the aunt, the quote, villainess and such. There's more to her. And there seems to be another hint of regression because Luca is acting kind of suspicious. Like, he's doing things differently from the storyline sort of like things he's like i wish i could have done if i could back if i could go back in time because for his story he kind of went through some hardships because he grew up from a common background and he was just thrust into the aristocracy and he's doing everything he could to make sure his path goes smoothly so that's where it's like huh I wonder if you're, you regressed it and you know what's going on and you're changing things for some reason because it seems like he kind of suspects that the aunt is different too because if he did regress then that means that his aunt's change of character by being nicer to him instead of being abusive he, like, he would know what's going on right? Next title Bon Appetit. She was reincarnated in a novel as Luana, the abandoned princess, and her death was already decided. She just wanted to let people know about her cooking talent, but she was misunderstood as a witch because of her cheese jerky. The general of the conquering army, Duke Legion, who had lost his sense of taste, took her to the empire for her extraordinary jerkies and to break the curse that had come down from generation to generation. It is delicious, isn't it? Prepare the same for the dinner. She was able to be able, she was happy to be able to cook and eat as much as delicious food as she wanted. But now, she also wanted to look after Legion. Eat three meals a day and make sure to make dessert. I'm sure he'll be able to gain some weight. The Duke took the jerky from the princess. On the surface, it was no different from any beef jerky. But when he took a bite of it, it felt like a new world had opened up. The jerky made by the princess felt more tender than the others as he gently crushed it with his teeth. The taste of condensed meat smudged his tongue as he chewed on. It was just as she said. He could feel the savory taste of the spicy meat 
and at the end of the day, he wanted to have more. The desire that he had faded for a while. Quote, I didn't really want anything, but now I think I do. Quote. I actually saw this story as a light novel, web novel, whatever you want to call it, because I saw it on the web. And it was still、um, being updated, it wasn't complete. So when I saw this as a webtoon, I was like, shoot, yeah, I want to read this. And it's really good. So, another side character, except she was supposed to die. And instead of dying, she is taken to with Duke Legion because he was cursed with, with a lack of sense of taste. And she transmigrated. And when she realized that she still had memories of her past life or whatever life she had before, she's like, <laughs> I want to cook the food I used to eat. So, what she'd do is she would cook all the dishes she could with the resources she had. And because she was an abandoned princess, no one cared. So, she could cook all she wanted. She just lacked a good kitchen. And when she gets taken to Duke Legion's place, she's like, oh my gosh, the tools, the kitchen is amazing. So, she could cook as much as she could to the best she could. And she kind of lied to Duke Legion, saying that she was a witch apprentice and she could help break his curse because he's like, How come I can taste your food? Are you a witch? And his family was known for witch hunting, for hunting witches. And she's like, Not a witch. And she's like, Yes, I am a witch apprentice. That's why I can do this and I can help you with your curse. And he's like, Okay, come with me. And because she's been taking care of him and they've been spending time together, some love interest is happening. We're seeing some development with them. And the story originally was about her sister. Her sister gets taken and sent to the emperor because the emperor that the duke was serving wanted a sister. So there's that little side story going on. And. There's ours with the Bon Appetit. Next title is The Adopted Daughter in Law Wants to Leave. I have possessed the body of the extremely cruel villain who tormented the male lead while in the orphanage. Just don't do that, I thought so. But it looks pitiful that he keeps getting beaten up by the other kids, so I'll keep an eye on him for a bit. The child next door, I will also adopt that child. Am I adopted? No. I would take the position of daughter in law. Like that, the male lead and I were adopted together. But how can that be? And the female lead. So, what happened was the villain. So, another transmigrate into a villain's body. But this one doesn't really showcase that she's a super, super villain. She's apparently just a villain from the childhood. But, anyways, what happened is the male. Protagonist of this story. He gets picked up by, I guess, an uncle. He's actually a friend of the father's. The male protagonist's parents died, and he gets sent somewhere. Like, he has like a tragic childhood, you know, show, showcasing his hardship and how he got strong, you know, he overcome all these trials and such. But, anyways, so the guy, who's I believe also a duke, he comes. Tries it because this whole time he's looking for this boy. He finds him, but our transmigrated girl, she's also next to him. She kind of helped the Duke find this boy. And he's like, okay, I'm going to take this boy, but also I'm going to take her too, who's next to him. So that's where it means,、uh, what is it? The child next door, I'll also adopt that child. I think that was like a mistranslation. I think it's supposed to be the child next. Next. Uh, I will also adopt that child. And somehow he's intrigued by her. Like he senses her cleverness, her wittiness, and he wants to keep her around, especially since she's been helping the boy, the boy that he's been looking for, the boy that he feels responsible for. But, anyways, he also senses like a connection with her. Like he's drawn to her. And he's like saying, okay. 
So she's going to be the daughter-in-law. She's going to be engaged to this boy. That's how we're going to keep her around. And uh, we're just going to do all these things to make sure she can be qualified to be engaged to him and whatnot. What I like about this story is not only is it showing the perspective of someone who's trying to survive in this world, but she's utilizing the male protagonist. She's utilizing the Duke. And um, they're kind of like showing some mystery with her mom. Apparently, her mom was like a infamous thief and she stole from the emperor. And the Duke, he had like a love interest too. And she's also a mystery. And I'm wondering if the girl's mom and the Duke's past lover are the same person. I'm wondering. I'm not too sure. But I'm very intrigued and i'm like this is catching my attention i'm always anticipating for the next chapter and the last title we're going to talk about is i'm engaged to an obsessive male lead the summary for this one is one day villain villain however you want to say her name orlando comes to the realization that she's been living the last 21 years as a side character in a boy love novel and is fated to die in one year in light of this valen decides to escape her abusive family and live out the rest of her days in peace however her only way out is getting engaged to the male lead of the novel jailer Lys. Leisestein, Leisestein, however you want to say this. He seems like the perfect candidate for a contractual engagement because he's into men, meaning there's no risk of them actually falling in love with each other. But as the two spend more time together, Jellard seems to be falling for her. Will she be able to navigate her growing feelings for him while keeping her inevitable death a secret? so what's interesting about this is yeah the boy love novel thing she changes it it does not become that and in the story she kind of explains how it came about that way so jillard had a sad past he is an illegitimate child well he's not the illegitimate child he's the wife's second wife's son and he does not look like the father so the father his thing was tough love and he, he felt like he wasn't loved by his father his mom died so he only had one parent and he felt like he never he was never loved and here comes this male protagonist of the story showing him compassion and because he just felt that one sliver of compassion he became obsessed with the male lead and that's how it became a boy love now we got our girl here Valen, who shows some compassion first so it's not a boy love novel anymore because jillard has his sights on her that's <laughs> that's funny i like that and then um, she is supposed to die in within a year and um, what's interesting is so we don't know why she's dying she has like this incurable disease hereditary disease thing because her mom died of it too and um, she is so fascinating she's smart intelligent adaptable for some reason her father groomed her to be like the perfect noble woman but because he didn't like her he didn't really care for her he she was more disposable and he had this mistress and he had a child with this mistress and he cares for that child more they're like the same age so you can really tell how much value she has and she's disposable because he knows she's dying and he's just using her until she's gonna die and i find it kind of weird this is my opinion when she leaves because she's like well if i'm gonna live for only a year left i'm gonna live to the fullest i'm gonna leave this place that makes me feel miserable and i'm gonna go to this other place where i can like be happy until i die what i find weird is this father 
after she leaves, he's like, oh my gosh, I need her when I go to these events and such. She was really helpful. She was knowledgeable. She could help me with the socializing. She could help me. me uh, she was like a secretary where she reminded me who's who, what's the connections, how they are beneficial, blah, 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 blah. When she was gone, he was like freaking out. And I'm thinking, why didn't you teach your favorite daughter this stuff? Were you not going to take her to these events? Like, something's not making sense. It's like, <laughs> I feel like this part was showcasing how the younger sister, the sister of the mistress, is lacking in things. It's just to show like a contrast between the two. I understand that, but it's like kind of frustrating for me because the younger sister, she's she had this like superiority complex but once she realizes how inferior she was to her dying sister she gets mad frustrated and for me that's reading i'm like so satisfied with that i'm like hoo, 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 this is what you get for not appreciating your sister mm -hmm, just desserts but on the other hand, where she gets mad, she's like, she stole this from me. She stole that. I deserve this. I'm like thinking, girl, you didn't put the work in it. Why do you deserve it? It don't make sense. But anyways, besides that. So we have our girl who transmigrated. Valen. 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 I think it's Valen. And then we have the original male protagonist. Now, the original male protagonist, apparently he regressed too. There's, is this the third one where there's like regression going on at the same time as transmigration? Anyways, he regressed too, but he experienced everything that he went with Jellard. And it was like kind of like S&M kind of boy love. Uh, it was like rated 18 plus kind of thing. Anyways, so he still remembers all that and he longs for the mistress daughter, Valen's sister. He longs for her. He's like, oh yeah, I liked her. But because he's kind of jaded, he's guarding his heart. He's viewing her as, oh, I can't have her because I'm tainted. Oh, I can't have her because she's just an innocent person. What's really interesting about this is the latest chapter he is seeing her for her true colors and boy does he not like it and i'm wondering if he truly cared for her like before he regressed she was the one that he wanted to be with the female but he was stuck with this guy who's obsessed with him now that he regressed he can have her he's already made a name for himself because he's done what a lot of people who regress do they fix everything that they, that they regret so one of the things he fixed was his income so now he's well off he's connected and such he's important he has value he can be independent he doesn't need to depend on others and he's not weak to nobles and whatnot because he's got the money now besides that so He's really well off. He can have her. He can. And she likes him. But there's this part where he's seen her bad side that he didn't really see. Because before he regressed in the BL novel, he met her after Valen died. And now he's seen her before Valen died. So this is really interesting. And those are five titles that I've been reading with the theme Transmigration. Hope you guys like this video. And if you did, don't forget to give this a like. And if you have other titles that you've been reading that have that same theme Transmigration, let us know in the comments below and let us know what you thought about them. And if you recommend them, please say you recommend this because, you know, I've been reading a lot of stuff and I'm like, I would like to read more. Yeah. <laughs>
Other than that, if you want to hang out in other ways, we also stream on twitch.tv slash Lejosuperfina. I normally stream RPG games and I also host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. We're available on all platforms. Link is in the description below. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this is the Superfina channel talking about five titles we've been reading with the theme Transmigration. Hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Laters!